The healing arts of osteopathy, chiropractics, and rolfing are all based upon the idea that if you can change the structure of the body, you can tap into healing forces within. That's the original concept with these. You see, these were vitalistic forms of medicine. And just like herbal medicine and homeopathy, these were designed to help people harness what Hippocrates referred to as the healing power of nature. If you have blockages in the body, such as constriction of the muscles or rigidities of the joints, these not only can cause pain, but they can also restrict blood flow, which will impair the organ function, thus ultimately leading to poor health. If you look at the old books on osteopathy, for example, you can see that this was used to treat pneumonia, heart disease, kidney disease, mental illness, anything really. And these therapies have been around for a long time. D.D. Palmer, the founder of chiropractic medicine, said, this art has been practiced for thousands of years. And he made it very clear that it was medicine, but medicine that did not treat diseases. They adjust causes. So he was saying that the cause of disease traces back to the structure of the body. It's when things get locked up. That's the original cause. Now, when you read his original quotes, you can see he was being very absolutist about this, and I actually don't encourage people to look at it that way. What I'm saying is that structural healing is one important component of the healing process. So, for example, in my work, you know, I'll give remedies such as herbal remedies or homeopathic remedies, dietary prescriptions. I'll suggest lifestyle changes, and I'll also incorporate something to address the structural issues of the body. One of the important philosophers of structural healing was Ida Rolf, and she had a lot of great things to say about this process, including form and function are a unity, two sides of one coin. And in order to enhance function, appropriate form must also exist or be created. And so while Dee Dee Palmer was focused in on adjusting the spine and getting those joints to be mobile, Ida Rolf was focused in on the fascia of the body and created a healing method of sculpting the shape of the body. And she said, the fixation of the flesh interferes with the energy flow that is the essence of life. So those are two examples of structural healing methods, but you know, there's many, many others. If you practice some sort of a healing art or you're a student of healing arts and you're starting to incorporate the concepts of vitalism, I encourage you to include the methods that deal with the structure of the body. And the method that I use is called strain counter strain. This method was developed by an osteopath in Eastern Oregon named Lawrence Jones. And what I find is that it is a very gentle, simple, and reliable way to help people release what could be lifelong patterns of constrictions. Yes, it's very good at getting rid of muscular pain, but it goes way beyond that. And so in the next video, I'm going to describe how this method works and how you can incorporate the principles of strain counter strain into your work if you're an herbalist or homeopath or whatever vitalistic approach to healing you use. I would say that any healing therapy can be helped and enhanced by incorporating a good structural healing method such as strain counter strain.